Hello everyone, and today we're going to learn how to do some needle felting. For needle felting, you need a few supplies, and one of them is a felting needle. Felting needles, can, you can find them at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, or you can find them online. At, uh, locally, you get little containers like this, and they're fine ones and coarse ones, and I'm not sure if you can come in close enough, but these are very, very, very sharp, and at the end of each of these, there are little barbs, and when you poke the needle into the felt, into the uh, fiber, that creates um, the felting part. It intertwines individual hairs and turns it into felt. Um, there are different sizes of needles. They're all about the same length, but the diameter of the needle itself is either bigger or smaller. And I like to use the fine ones. So, the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is uh, flat felting using these cookie cutters. They're, they're easiest to learn on and you get a shape without having to worry what the shape is going to be like. So we'll start with an empty alpaca. So we're just taking loose alpaca fiber and I just grab a bunch of it like this and twist it up. It doesn't hurt um, to have it back and forth. and and you just stuff the cookie cutter with loose fiber. And you're never going to get enough the first time around, and it doesn't like to stay in place, as you see. But we've got enough to start with. And here's where you really need to be careful when you begin for two things. You want to be careful that you don't poke your fingers, and also be careful that you don't poke the metal part of the cookie cutter. If it's over the edge, just bring it, bring it in. And that's amazing. Uh, with a few stabs like this, how you can make that a fiber lay down. And you just keep poking and keep filling. So this leg didn't have much at all, so we're gonna take some of our and stuff it. And when you see this part, you say, oh, well, that's going to go very fast. But actually, to complete an alpaca, it takes at least 45 minutes. But you keep, keep pressing and poking like this. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the pad that I'm using is a piece of, like, foam. And you can buy those at a craft shop, and they cost maybe about $6.00. Or you could buy a foam, uh, like, cushion. Okay, so we've got it pretty well down, but there's not nearly enough fiber in it. And the other thing you need to do when you're felting is, you see it felts down to this pad as well. So every now and again, you have to pick it up and turn it over, stuff the little guy back in his cookie cutter, and add some more fiber to it. So this one is only about half as thick as we need it to be. So we'll grab some more, mess this up a little bit. Oh, and as I was saying before, these felt are these pads. You could use a, you know, like a, a foam for a cushion and then cut it up and you can get, you know, three or four for the price that you would get one of them if you buy a a specially made felting pad. So you just keep pressing and be careful when you get to the edge uh, because I'll show you this is what happens to the needle <gasps> if you hit the the edge or worse yet it breaks. If I'm careful I can still use that one that's why I didn't throw it out. So you keep stuffing this in and turning it over until the thing is pretty, pretty full. All right, I think you got that idea. So I'm gonna take it off, and you will be doing this three, four times and flipping it and taking it out and flipping it. And then, when you get that part finished, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be quite firm. And I worked on this one a little bit earlier, but what you need to do when you pull, pull this out, it's going to have square edges, and the square edges don't look quite right. So what I do is I spend another maybe 10 minutes going all around this and bevel the edges. And this is a craft also that 
someone really needs to have good uh, hand-eye coordination. You don't let little children do this. Um, they should be at least eight years old uh, and pretty dexterous. You say, well, all right, now we want an eye. And these are not being, you know, realistic in eye color because you want contrast. So for an eye, I'm going to take a little bit of this white and you say, well, an eye, it, it, it doesn't need very much. You can see, you can barely see how much that is. And I take it and I just roll it up in my fingers like this until a little, little spit works good on my fingers and you roll it into a ball and then say, oh, here's about where the eye should be. So I lay this down and I start stabbing that in. It doesn't take too many stabs and notice it's going to get smaller as I stab it in. Then needs an eye on the other side and you re just repeat that same thing. Another cool thing I like to do with alpaca is you can put spots on them of different sorts but oftentimes I like to make a little heart on it. So to make a heart you say, I didn't take very much of that, and I put, well, I'll put the heart kind of where the alpaca heart is. And, and you say, well, I'm gonna draw a heart using this needle. And what I do is go down the center line of the heart, uh, where the heart would be, and then I just kind of make an outline and push the fiber around. until it takes the shape of a heart. The yeah, alpaca uh, cutters come in different shapes, so you can have a big one and you can have a little one, and you can make these into ornaments or you can make them into mobiles and they'd be great gifts. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a three-dimensional thing. And one of the easiest ones to do is an owl. You get something that's called core wool. You can find it very easily online. It's inexpensive compared to, you can go to um, Hobby Lobby or, um, what's the other one, Michael's. And this, I, can, I think maybe this cost me 10 or $12. And it's not that many ounces. It's 3.7 ounces. For about that same amount, you could you could get a, a whole pound of core wool. So most of these three-dimensional things start out with core wool. It's it's the least expensive and the least processed. To do this, you just take a hunk of this, about this size, um, and you start rolling it. You put it together and you roll it as tight as you can. And I. I Put the, I'll turn the ends in, and sometimes I roll it against my cloth here. The tighter you roll it, the less um, poking you have to do with your needle. So that piece was started out pretty big, and now it's this small, and I'm holding the edges, and I'm just going to start poking in like this. This, I've decided, you see, this is a smaller end than that. It's a more cone shape. And this is going to be the bottom of the owl. And we want the owl to be able to stand up. And so I said it takes about 45 minutes to make an alpaca from start to finish to get it really nice finished off. And it takes about the same amount of time to make one of these guys. Now, I'm gonna concentrate on this bottom a lot, because if I'd set it up now, it would probably fall over. So, what we need to do is get it nice and solid. We want the bottom part to be indented a little bit, so it's gonna sit on the outer rim. So that's basically how you work to get the, the basic shape. I've done another sample that has this finished. This would take me about five more minutes to get it nice and solid. And then you decide, okay, what side is going to be my face side? And I'll take a bunch of, depending on what color I want to make it, and I've decided I'm going to make this one um, 
a tones of gray and I, I want to get a, a thread so I, I just pull out a piece of darker gray and then I'm going to twist it kind of like making it into a piece of yarn then I lay it on the side I, where I decided it was going to be my face mosquito got me So that's pretty wide and you can just keep pushing it back and forth with your needle until you get a nice defined line there. And you say, oh, it's way thicker right here. Well, to make it thinner, you just keep poking it in the same spot and that's going to get to be a thin line. So that's going to be the face of the owl. All right, once you got the face done, and I've got it done on this one, I'm gonna take some more of this and just spread it out, and we're going to make his whole back covered with this. It's not gonna cover in one coat, but you keep doing the same thing. Keep poking, 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 poking. Okay, we want this part solid right here. So at some point, oh, you think, oh, it's not going to turn out, but you know, keep poking away. And I haven't had anyone give up on an owl because they're all different, they're all creative, and they all turn out. But then you keep poking, 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 and the more you poke, the more solid your little creature becomes. For the, again, I'm going to use a, a black, and you need a little bit more than you did for the alpaca. And I'm going to do the same thing, kind of make a ball, try it. Yep, that'll be all right. And put that in place, and then just keep poking, 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 poking. All right, I'm not finished with that, but you get the idea. The trick is now get the second eye the same size as the first eye. That looks way bigger, but I'm going to make it fit and just poke that in um, you can also find some great uh, YouTube uh, lessons on needle felting yeah they look pretty close all right and then it needs a beak um, and hmm. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a little bit of this gray, I'm going to take a little bit of this black, and I'm going to blend the two. I want it not as totally black, but I want it darker, and to make a color that you don't have, mix two colors together, and just put them overlap and keep tearing them, and then to make a beak, sort of make a you know, take a little wad like this, and I kind of form it in my hands first, and then I start uh, putting it on here. And then roll it on my fingers a little bit. And feels like it might be a little bit big but I'll put that right in the between his eyes all right now for the wings I made one wing as a sample 
So to do a wing, again, the trick of this is try to get two wings the same size. So it's kind of like drawing it. And I'll lay them down. And then I kind of make the outline of a wing shape like this. And then I take the extra fiber from the outside and just bring it in. And then this is too long. And when I do do wings or parts that have to match, uh, I do it like this, uh, do side by side. Oh, that's a little bit too big. I gotta make it smaller. And just like with the alpaca in the cookie thing, uh, you have to turn this over too, otherwise you'll felt it right to your pad. So this one needs a little more felting. I'm not going to finish it for you, but I'm going to show you how to attach. So these wings are, are going to be kind of like reversible. This one would fit on this side, or if I turn it this way, it fits on this side, so it doesn't matter. This is a little bit big yet. So to make it smaller, I just poke down from the top side. Again, here's where you got to be careful that you don't get your fingers. Okay. All right, now to attach it, we'll attach it on this side. It's right at the shoulder, and you just Put it on like this. So it's like drawing with a needle, sculpting with a needle. So that wing is a nice contrast um, from its back. I would spend a little bit more time uh, refining it along the edges, but there are a few more details. Um, they often have spots on the front. So what I did ahead of time is I made a bunch of little spots, tiny little pieces of black I tore out, and um, I start putting them in. And you do the same way as you did the eye, but you got something smaller. You notice how big it was when I put it on, and look how little it is? So the more you poke it, the smaller it gets. So when I, I do a beginning class on felting, we d it takes us about three hours to make this. Now, if you wanna make feet on your little owl, um, just again, take a little bit of yellow, roll it into like uh, an oval, and just roll it back and forth, and you make three of those. And I made a couple before, and what you do is kind of put them together that looks like toes. And then just punch them together. Take a little bit of extra yellow to make sure they all stay together. And then here's my first foot. And you can add that one off to this side and just turn them upside down and hold them like this and stab the feet in. Let's take our second foot and we'll put it over here. All right, he needs a little bit refining yet, but there's the owl. If you're interested in learning how to do needle felting, just give the EJC a call and we can set up a class to do a cookie cutter flat felting or we can do three-dimensional. All right, have fun.